the Reds are talking Reds and it's game day, match day. The Reds are playing tonight against Arsenal. Um, and, and with James Sutton to talk about that, to talk about Man City, to talk about the Leeds, to talk about football, to talk about everything. Um, and the Reds now, right now, are favourites to win the Premier League. Uh, I've, I've got to be honest, I didn't really understand why we weren't anyway. Uh, but in the summer, or in the break, whatever you want to call it, before the ball was kicked, City were very much the favourites. Why? And Liverpool were as out, out as far as 9-4 to four at one point. So well done if you got on that. Uh, <laughs> but, but you're not going to get on that now. It's 11-10 to 10 for Liverpool, 11-8 to 8 for City. And, and, and obviously the shift comes after yesterday. Uh, a glorious afternoon for the Reds <laughs> when they didn't even play. Where... Manchester City were defeated by five goals to two by Leicester City. Good old Brendan. I won't hear a word said against them. He looked great yeah. as well, Brendan, by the way. Yeah, good. He looked yeah. fantastic. Yeah, he, he looked really on the you know, Lockdowns, but yeah, he's been boxing again, yeah. hasn't he? He's into that, isn't he? Yeah, um, lockdown's been kind to him. And yeah, it's just funny, isn't it, with City, I think, mate, because, you know, obviously we keep an eye on them. Uh, you know, we are a Liverpool podcast, video channel, website and everything else, but... These are now our modern day rivals, if you like that. We're going toe to toe with. So, of course, you're going to watch them, see what they're all about. And it appears that they're still shit at the back after spending all that money. You know, three penalties given away yesterday, all by different players as well. Didn't look particularly full of ideas going forward either. And look, they're still good enough to, you know, leave us with egg on the face if you go too far. But that's a nice start. To sort of this week of football, isn't it? You know, Liverpool go and win tonight. Hopefully, it's a it's a, it's a, a first blow landed on the chin, isn't it? In the title race, yeah, massively. If you listen to if you listen to Guardiola after the game as well, I mean, he was absolutely gutted by yeah. the whole affair. And they looked City, they looked quite good, but I think I think teams nowadays just don't show them any respect after what happened last season. You know, and a lot of teams got at them, and a lot of teams had real success against them. Um, all it took was a couple of breaks yesterday from, from Leicester before they'd even scored. And City just looked absolutely terrified by the whole affair. And they're all blaming each other and there's no kind yeah. of there's no cohesion, there's no sort of unity within the squad, which is, you know, something that we've spoken about a lot, you know, the, the kind of mentality of our of our lads. Um, you don't it doesn't look like that. It still looks certainly at the back, it looks like a team of individuals who just don't don't support each other, don't play for each other. And yeah, man, they were they were they were fucking awful at some point, yeah. man. Yeah, and I mean, that and that scoreline doesn't flatter Leicester. I mean, that I saw the last penalty that I, I was sort of flicking in and out, but that last penalty they gave away was just dreadful. Yeah, I mean, it was proper playground behaviour. Um, and Jamie Vardy's in my fantasy team, so I had a I had a fuck I had a lovely, oh, you've had I, a great time, I had a lovely time. You've had a great time. <laughs> lovely um, time. Well, I thought what was interesting as well is you know not just sort of what happened on the pitch but what happened off it as well afterwards in that you know as you say there you're right I think to highlight sort of how you saw them reacting and you saw you know senior players really sort of spitting the dummy a little bit and having a go at each other and all this kind of stuff and Rodri afterwards does an interview with uh, Five Live and he says for me they were lucky Football has not been fair to us. Jesus. Maybe it's our fault, maybe it's their strength, but it's difficult to explain. We did a lot of good things to win the game. And a team like Leicester comes here and plays with 11 guys behind the ball. Now, they obviously absolutely dominated possession, City. But I, I thought Leicester, you know, it was entertaining to mm. watch. They scored, and, and it, okay, three penalties, but also a goal that goes in the top bin from Madison. Also a goal from Vardy, which, you know, if... I think soon as it was said, if Messi had scored it, everyone would be <laughs> raving about it. But because it's Vardy and he's a bit of a meth, um, <laughs> you know, we we don't sort of celebrate it in the same way. But I did yesterday. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, but it's, but this is the thing that like not and not to you know let's, look, let's not spend the whole time talking about. City, no, I know. I'm but, gonna move on in a minute. But they're at, they're fuck they're crybabies, man. They do it every time. Whenever they lose, whenever they get royally trounced, rather than just hand, hold their hands up and go, we we just weren't good enough. They come out with nonsense like that to suggest that Leicester put you know eleven men behind the ball is bollocks. That's not how. That's not the game that I witnessed. Leicester won the midfield. They were yeah. They won the midfield and they were super clever. They were really intelligent with the ball. And it, yeah, it's just sour grapes, man. If you get if you you can't say you were unlucky when you lost by that scoreline. Like that's just nonsense. I'm afraid, Rodri. That just that just doesn't add up, lad. Sorry. 
Long may it continue. Um, may th- there's continue. a nice nice line in The Athletic as well, just to finish up on City, whereby uh, the reporter who reports on City was go- you know, documenting the problems, documenting the fact that they're now buying Ruben Diaz, another defender, spending another £65 million trying to solve the situation at the back, and also spending it on a player that they don't seem to particularly want again. They wanted Koulibaly, they wouldn't pay the money, etc., etc., but he's documented here, and I quite enjoyed reading this this morning. It says they've done well with Kyle Walker and Laporte, and it's a good job that the Frenchman has been so good. Because the decision, and it was a decision, not to pay what Southampton wanted for Virgil van Dijk has helped transform Liverpool into what they are today. So he's persistent with the line there saying that if City had really wanted van Dijk, they could have gone and got him, and they decided not to. Well, thanks, lads. <laughs> yeah. I really hope that that is true. Um, on on the Reds, then um, I feel like you know across contents the last few days we've given Arsenal a lot of credit, mm-hmm. um, and you know rightly so to an extent in that you know the 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 manager's come in, he's done a good job. Arteta, he's turned them round. They don't look like a fucking gang of wet wipes anymore. Yeah, uh, but. I think we need to do a little bit of context today as we build up to the game tonight Mm -hmm. in that they finished eighth last season. They finished 43 points behind Liverpool. And while Sam with his bird's knickers on his face celebrates winning the charity shield, it was a draw, mate. And okay, you beat us on penalties, fair, fair enough. But what I'm saying here is... I think they're a much better side and I think they'll give Mm -hmm. us a much tougher game but I almost think we shouldn't talk them up too much because Arteta probably by his own admission would say I've still got some work to do here lads, let's not get carried away. Um, So, because we've we've played them before, played most of these players before, beat most of these players before. So, without our strongest 11, by the way. Yeah, and look, there's one or two things floating around. We, We don't know the score yet and it may well be you know, the, what we say on here is superseded by some news later in the day or whatever, but there's talk, isn't there, that Alisson maybe is, uh, might not play. There's talk that Thiago might not play. There, there was talk that they hadn't traded and things like that. Now, a lot of people went off their heads and I'm like, and all that. Mm. And I just sort of, I, I'm, not, I'm not with them. I can't get myself to that stage. I mean, Adrian, yes, he's made some mistakes. Yes, you could say in the Atletico game, he cost us a little bit and things like that. But I would still say he is in credit as a number two goalie because you think about the start of last season. Yeah. He comes in for that Norwich game completely cold and he's fine. Mm-hmm. And he's fine. And we beat Arsenal with him in goal last season. So what's to say we can't do it again if that is the case? Absolutely. But also you've got you know, you look at the players in front of them as well. You know, even okay, so uh, do we know have we got an idea on the defensive situation? Is Gomez gonna be Gomez playing? is trained. He's so, trained. Okay. So it, it's I think it's it sounds like he might be all right. Henderson definitely can't yeah. play, um, but yeah, Gomez is, is, wait, a, is either, a might. Either way, you know, if you put, if you if you have Van Dijk and Gomez in front of, of whichever goalkeeper it, it happens to be, or you have um, Fabinho dropping back, who, by the way, can, I mean, fucking hell, he can, I mean, what a defender he he can be. Brilliant against and, Chelsea. And, you know, actually, if Allison can't play, I'd stick him in nets. He can probably do it. He can probably do a job in net. But do you know what I mean? We've got this. It's, it's with the sum of its parts. So it's not just a case of yeah, we've got might have one or two players missing. But as a, as a squad, as a team, there's so many lads that can come in and do an equally good job. You know, yeah. across the board. So I'm 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 not massively concerned. I mean, you know, you, you're more worried if you lose your goalkeeper. But as I've just said, you know, if Virgil Van Dijk is back on his game, paired with Gomez, who's you know one of the best young you know defenders in the world. Or Fabino drops back. It's 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 not a problem. I, I honestly, but I mean more importantly, I love watching Liverpool Arsenal. Liverpool Arsenal for me is one of one it's of a proper game of it's football. It's a proper it? game of football. Yeah. If you look, here's a stat for you. It's been 20 years since Liverpool and Arsenal had a nil-nil. Go ahead. Yeah. There are always goals. I mean, you look at some of the bound to be nil nil tonight. It's now not going <laughs> to be that, and that's the that's the clip that they're going to use. Yeah. Now it won't be. Look, it's going. You know, there's there's always goals. It's always exciting. I um I think back to was it was it 2017? I think with the, the, was it five one at Anfield? I think yeah. 2018 wasn't it when um, 2018 for me no got an hat. For me got gets yeah. a hat trick. Yeah, that's right. I had a friend of mine down from Scotland. Get in, Sam. <laughs> Sorry, mate. He's, he's hating all this. He's not even looking at us anymore. I had a mate down from Scotland that day, and he'd never been to a Premier League game. And we sat in the upper upper uh, centenary, 
and we had three goals in half an hour. And he, and he went, is it like this every week? <laughs> it's always like this. I said, no, he's not fucking just shut, shush and watch. Fucking, I can't believe it. <laughs> Who did he support normally? Uh, he's not even, not even a football. Nah. Sorry, Christian, but you're not. Nah. But do you know what I mean? Every, every time we play them, you're guaranteed goals, you're guaranteed excitement. Arsenal right now are really great fun to watch for the for the neutral. Yeah. And it's gonna be an absolute it's gonna be a screamer tonight. And our front three are in absolutely ridiculous form. Let's not, you know, Mo Salah right now, I mean it's 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 bubbling away that the, the, the pundits and the people in the media are starting to cotton on to just how good his form is right now. But going into this game, I mean, you know, their defenders are gonna have one hell of a job. Yeah, I I do quite like them currently in yeah. terms of, you know, like Aubameyang's obviously a good player. Arteta, even though he was once a blue nose, is actually quite a likeable fella. Yeah. And I like the way he's sort of gone in there and took it by the scruff of the neck. And seems like there was a bit of politics behind the scenes and he's just gone in and got him having this. Yeah. I'm in charge, lads, <laughs> yeah. or I'm getting off. Um, and, and look, yeah, we did get beat by them, obviously, in July at their place. But, I mean, we literally plated up two goals for them. I mean, Alisson and Van Dijk, two of the most reliable players in the team, you know, gift them mistake, gift them goals, and then uh, he only had three shots, and, and we scored. Start, and we scored it, too. and we were taking off foot off the gas then. Anyway, yeah. we were so far ahead that yeah. it's, it's not. You know, the, if you look at the context, it's, yeah, it's, fuck it's, off, it's, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a really miserable time behind the camera. Yeah. Fuck off, Sam. <laughs> um, so yeah, I reckon we're going to be all right. I reckon yeah. we're going to be all right, and I reckon it's going to be a good game. The other thing I wanted to uh, just get you on before we go is um, the transfer window because obviously mm. it is something that lots of people get really excited about not Jurgen Klopp he's literally said he doesn't understand why like buying new things is is more exciting than having a boss team that wins things and I'm sort of with him I've got to be honest I mean I loved I loved getting Thiago don't get me wrong I was like get in you know what I mean I was out there but equally I don't, like we're good you know we, we're, yeah. we're good, you know, and we've done some good business now. To be fair, so even if you, even if you were desperate to see us do business, well, we've done some good business. But now, of course, a lot of people are now saying, "Well, we still need a centre half." We still, you know, Dejan's left and he's not being replaced. Klopp's talking about Billy the Kid, and and, and they really sort of rate him really highly. He looks boss, to be fair, you know, he do, he also looks young. He looks like he's got a mistake in him. That's what happens with a young centre half. Van der Berg's really young as well. Yeah. Obviously, the other fellow went out to Wolves. So, you know, there's an argument to be made that, that there is a space there, but he's been asked about it. He said, I don't expect us to be doing a lot. The, the deadline for international deals is next Monday, and domestic transfers you get till Friday, October the 16th. Uh, but international deals have to be done by 11 pm next Monday. And he, yeah, so he said, I don't expect a lot. Uh, I think we're well covered. We have three absolutely top, top. Top, top, he said top three times, he's turned into Harry Redner. <laughs> uh, top, top, top centre halves. Uh, we've got young players in line. We've got Fabinho as the backhand if you want. And then all of a sudden, three players are out for a few days, and that's not nice. But you can't solve that in the transfer market. We will not even try if nothing more serious happens. And I hope we don't have to try that. If the situation stays like it is, then there will be nothing. So what he's saying there is, unless there's a, 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 a really bad injury to someone, he won't be dipping in. There's likely to be out still, of course. There's still Wilson, Brewster, yeah, you yeah, know, and various yeah. other players where there's a bit of a question mark. But it sounds like he's happy with what we've got. Are you, are you happy with that, or do you, th you know, do you think it was a bit of a freak that we have Gomez and Matter injured at the same time the other day? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Which is very typical. Yeah, absolutely classic <laughs> Liverpool, like first game of the season. Yeah, they're, they're made of crisps. No, look, I think you know. I, Ultimately, I think right now, I, I think we all have to trust Jurgen Klopp, mm -hmm. and I think he's earned. I think he's earned the right to be trusted implicitly with any transfer business, with any squad selection. If if he if he says we're fine, if he says we don't need any more players in, that's good enough for me. I think there's always there's always going to be an argument for another centre back. There's always going to be an argument. There's, you know, we, you know, we, we, we're we're football obsessive, man. You know, we, we're always looking at our squad and thinking how can we improve that. You know, and if you hear a little whisper of a player, especially an English player or a player from a you know a lower Premier League team, you know, we're always going to talk about. It. We're always going to think, ah, oh, yeah, that might that might fix that. But ultimately, yeah, that's you know, he's got us to where we are right now. And if he says we don't need a player, who are we to argue with that? Absolutely. Okay. Well, there'll be loads of stuff uh, around the game, as there always is from the Anfield app. So there'll be a post-match podcast, a post-match video. There'll be writing on the website. There will be posts 
on the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we'll also be doing something called Hot Mic, uh, which if you're not onto that one yet, it's basically alternative. Sounds very sexy. It, hot Mic, Mic. Um, it's basically alternative commentary. Uh, so if, if you're getting fed up of, of watching certain commentators <laughs> on the telly and you're throwing your pie and mash at the telly in frustration, well, eat the pie and mash and listen to Hot Mike instead um, because it'll be a couple of the boys talking it through, talking talking like fans, talking like fans in the pub, I'm not saying they're going to be like Clive Tilsley, uh, but it's just something different and a lot of people like it. So if you look out for that tonight, if, if you jump on our Twitter feed, you'll see the links there to get through to Hot Mike. And yeah, loads of stuff post-match as well. So check it all out. Check the app out as well, available on all platforms and all that, you know, iPhone, Android, if you've got one of them. Uh, and yeah, up the Reds, let's hope we win tonight. Get in there, up the Reds.